So it occurred to me that I hadn't actually checked the Mega CD side of things. I remembered that uh, Mega Drive doesn't have a BIOS chip, uh, specifically a 40 pin chip that uh, sits there giant waiting to be dumped and everything. So what I did is I, um, I've removed the game because when the game is in it will automatically go into Mega Drive mode and ramp up. So this is the unit which uh, hasn't had any work done by me, so it hasn't got any trace repair, it's a nice clean reference board I suppose. So if we connect it to power, now remember we've got no Mega CD things connected at the moment, we get that. And that is all that we get. It doesn't advance anymore. The other one doesn't quite do that, so I took it apart and this is what I found. It's had some sort of repair work done to it. And the chip's not really in properly, just sort of sitting there, so that's why that wasn't working. And there's a bent leg. <laughs> oh dear. I should really clean that chip up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to burn a um, an EEPROM right now. So to burn an EEPROM, this is uh, one with the window, so erasable, programmable ROM. We're going to go and do that right now. So I'm going to get the UV lamp thing out and blank this thing and then I'll flash a BIOS. Oh, it's going to be fun. I hope this thing still works. No idea what this switch is. Is that on? It's on. It's on like Pokemon. 20 minutes, kids. Hope my pizza arrives. That'll be very good timing. It's a party. All right, so next step is to fire up the programmer with your newly blank chip. Some good old GQ4X. And we want to firstly choose the device. I need that. It's 27C1024. And it's got our specific brand, Hitachi. Read. So make sure it's blank. We've also got additional power plugged in. And just check through, make sure everything's F for Fred. Looking good. Then we want to go ahead and find our image. I'm using the um BIOS I originally dumped. So I know it should work. Default values. Check that the code is loaded. Go right to the top. Sega Mega Drive. Blah blah blah. What we'll want to do is byte swap it using that little button up there. And then it says gibberish, which is perfect. Then we hit the, uh, I guess just the right button. Just wait for it to program. You'll get some fancy lights on your reader. Looks like we're good. So you can do a read of the device. Just to 
confirm you've got the same thing on the chip. We'll byte swap it so we can read it. So you can make a drive. A bit of a few Fs at the bottom and have gibberish. And that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go with that is programmed. So let's go ahead and uh, get it into the game unit and hook it into the TV, see what happens. Fingers crossed. And then once you've got it hooked in, my legs are a little bit bent, I'm going to bend them in. This is a terrible type of socket. With the uh, eye eyelet things, you need the um, the other ones, the other type. I'll note that for future, but there it is installed. And uh, we've got power hooked in using the new method. And AV, AV's pretty important. Perfect. So now we can say that the trace repair was successful. 100%. No doubts in my mind that it works. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you flash a chip for a Sega Mega CD or Sega CD. And how you do trace repair. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I know I had fun doing it. <laughs>